And the reason for that is, depending on which way we're spinning these gears, this little heel to cut gear on here is going to push or pull one direction, depending on how we spin it. So there should be one on the inside of this guy, the one with all the little taps sticking out of it. There'll be a thrust washer on both sides for each surface. In this case, there should be one on the inside, so when we set it in there, it's got that one. The next one on top of that is the thrust washer between this planetary set and the sun gear. And the last one is a thrust washer between this guy and the other planetary set. That way, no matter which way anything is pushing, it's pushing up against the thrust washer and not shooting up my gears. So some of you have already started with the first one. You may want to pop that out and see if you're missing the uh, thrust washer, especially if there's one on the table. But first thing first, the one with the teeth all the way around it like that, that's going to go in into that lower angle gear and you just spin it around until it falls in. There we go. That one fell all the way in. Then I've got a thrust washer. That's to hold this guy back as it kind of pushes against it. So then we'll take this drum with our sun gear on it, set it in there. Give it a little rotate and it'll pop in. The last thing you should be taking is this one large piece. It's all up together. We didn't pull the snap ring or anything out of this. And there should also be on that one another one of our thrust washers. If your thrust washers are falling out as you try to put them together, get some transmission assembly loop. Once in a while I'll have one of these transmissions where um, these guys aren't sticking in there properly and if they fall out and sit on their teeth like this, it's a little bit proud, there we go, then we can't get all the rest of the parts together. And that's why I'll be cramming things in there trying to figure out what's going on. So make sure they're in there. Your should be sticking relatively well. And same thing as you install it, just twist it. It'll get everything to line up with your sun gear. There we go. And if everything is in there at the correct depth, you should be able to take your snap ring. Probably gonna need snapping pliers for this one. Not very good, I'll just take it on. And the last thing that we need is the thrust washer. These guys are what are referred to as select fit. So one of the last measurements we're going to do once this transmission is assembled is the input end plane. That's basically this guy sticking out of the pump, how much we can pull it back and forth inside the transmission. If I have way too much end plane, we're usually going to go back and look at this guy. Do I have one in there too thick or too thin? But that's what we set it up with. It only goes on one way, so you can't put it on backwards. You'll notice it's got some weird kind of cuts in the, in the center. It's not just a hole, it's not just round. So we're going to set that back in there, rotate this until it fits, there you go. And that will essentially reassemble all of my gear train. So what we're going to do is reassemble that. If you haven't finished your accumulators, go ahead and pop those in. Um, this shouldn't take us more than 5-10 minutes, then we'll come back and we're going to do our next step. Reinstall our clutch packs on this thing. Um, a couple of things we want to keep in mind when this goes back together is one, without the pump on it, it's going to want to fall out. So we're going to end up putting the band on and then over tightening it so things don't want to fall out. We'll come back and adjust it in a little bit. But uh, to get these clutches back together, if they are misaligned, so I'm going to mess these up a little bit. So in this one, none of my clutch plates are lined up. Now, when you put them together, it's not a bad habit to kind of look in there and make sure the plates are lined up when it goes together. It makes the next step easier. But if it's not, it's okay. You can simply take them and then just kind of twist them and shake them around. You can hear it line up one plate at a time. There we go. Now I'm down to my last one. And if I pull this back off, what you'll see is all of the plates will line up all the way to the bottom. Same thing with this. When this guy goes in, a lot of times what I like to do is just come here ahead of time. Kind of line up my plates as best I can. And what that'll do for me is when I put this back, kind of averaging how much they're stuck out to, when I put this back, these plates in here have to go on those grooves and that last view that we put back together. If they're not lined up, you end up fighting this thing in the whole way. I also install these together at the same time. The reason being, if this is in here and then I try to install this on it, it shapes this back out, things misalign. So what I'll often do is pre-assemble this guy. There we go. <coughs> pre 
reassemble this guy, and now I'll just choke up real tight on this guy. So when I put this together, it holds that one together. You can assemble it any way you want. I've just found for me, this is a method that does the, the best for me. So now what I need to do is I need to get this all the way installed. And the way we know that this is all the way installed is these little teeth sticking out right here, they need to be all the way past the surface of this little drum where it's got some notches in it, the part that you just put in. They may not bottom out all the way to the very end of it, but they should be getting pretty close. So I'm gonna make sure this guy's down. I think we're good there. I'm gonna set this in and see what we get. There we go. All right, I actually think I'm pretty good there. Okay, so I've got my clutches and my drums in, um, but what I want to do is I want to keep this from falling out while we go into the next component. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put the band back in. Now there's a whole series of adjustments or steps that we have to go through to properly adjust this band. But for now, I just want to pop this thing into place. It is directional. It's got a little notch for my strut that goes up here and a spot where this guy is going to come through the case and into the hole in the bottom, that's how I adjust this thing. So what I'm gonna do is simply look down there, get these guys lined up in their proper spot. There we go. Get this guy back into the case. And then I need my strut. So if you remember these guys, we pulled them out, they're not bolted in or twisted or anything like that. It is just the pressure of the adjustment that holds them in. So I'm going to try and slide this guy in there and see if I can get it in without it trying to fall back out on me. I'm trying to put the wrong one on there. Yeah, that's the bottom one. Actually works better with a pair of needles and pliers than do it out. There we go. Now, now that I've got that guy in place, what I'm going to do is intentionally over tighten this. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to hold all this together, all the clutches in where they belong, while we work on the rest of the transmission. So I'm just going to thread this guy in a little bit too much. There we go for the sole purpose of just holding it there. Okay, so if everything went the way that it's supposed to, when you look in here, these notches should be well encased in that drum, the one that had the sun gear into it. And then what I want to get you to is that band goes back in, holds a little too tight, and the rear band, we can take this strut, go, and we are going to slide it back into place. This one's going to go in there, right in this spot, so when you pull this up, you can actually see it actuate the band on the bottom. Sound good? Okay, let's get it to that point. 